Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Zaxter99. Today we're going to be going ahead and uh, going into chapter 9 of the Hero of Kendrickstone. And if you remember in the last uh, video, I got down in the tombs, I was going for that great sword, and I failed. And I think what happened is I misread. Actually, I know that's what happened because I didn't notice it until I actually edited the video and put chapter 8 up that I actually misread this part right here. Before you stands four futures, the blue fire now reads, which would you choose to prevent? You take a closer look at the four reflections staring back at you. <laughs> so, as you can see right here, I've actually underlined it. It says, which would you choose to prevent? Well, I mistakenly took that for which one I th wanted to be the most uh, because I didn't read it clearly and that caused me to do this. Who do you pick? The urchins, the merchant, the ruler, or the vagabond? Huh. You know, I want to be known, and I'm going to go ahead, I want to be a hero, so I want kids looking at me in adoration, so I'm going to pick the first one, the urchins. The blue flames flicker and write themselves again. You say you fear one thing, yet in your heart you fear another. You know not yourself. Then the letters arrange themselves again into words as damning as a headman's axe. Be gone from this place. You are not worthy of my sword. Aw oh, man, I chose the wrong choice. So yeah, you can see how me misreading that instead and choosing the one I wanted to be rather than which me I would want to prevent caused the uh, massive failure there down there in that crypt. So anyway, if that choice, if that mistake by me causes me to actually, you know, get killed or fail this final mission or test or whatever to save the city, I will be going back and making another video and going back, I'll probably have to go all the way through and try to make all the same choices that I made because there really is no way to go back uh, in this video. I don't believe. Yeah. There's no way to go back. Turn a game. Uh, a chapter or anything like that. So I'd have to start all over and go back and make all the same choices again uh, to get back to that point and then make the choice that I think would be most relevant based on that. So we'll see what happens here, but we're going to go ahead and finish off with the mistakes that I made. I mean, making mistakes is a part of life, and it's also <laughs> was a part of this story here as well. I uh, just completely misread it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and continue. Uh, I guess we're going to try to save the city without this great sword. So this is Chapter 9, like in the stories. Alright, let's go ahead and get this started. Chapter 9 It's half an hour past sunset when you finally reach the spot the court wizard assured you the bandit cap would be. Sure enough, right in front of you stands a circle of ancient stone, like the one you found a month ago, and within it stands the dark silhouette of the bandit cap, barely visible among the black mess of the forest canopy. You squint into the darkness, trying to make out the way in takes you a long time to find the entrance, and even then only through the reflection of the starlight on the metal weapons worn by the sentries. This would be so much easier if it were day. On the other hand, if you can barely see them, they can barely see you, which means they won't be able to fill you full of arrows before you get close. Trade-offs. You move up to just outside the entrance, no more than 30 paces away. The darkness won't hide you past this point. Now you have to deal with the quartet of sentries before you. The most obvious option would be to run right through. If you can catch them by surprise and get past them before they react, that will make striking down the bandit wizard himself before the camp reacts much easier. Of course, the sentries themselves could give chase, and you're not sure you want to face Melius Black Clad with four angry bandits at your heels. You could always fight the sentries, but that would take time. Every second you spend on these guards means another second for the rest of the camp to marshal its defenses. So what will it be? 
Blast to pass through is blocked out. I can't choose that. Push right through them or beat the guards down before advancing. I'm going to leave it as what it defaults to here. Push right through them and try to get past them. You take a deep breath, steady yourself, and set off towards the bandit camp at full tilt. The darkness covers your approach almost the entire way. It is only then you burst out of the bushes and into the clearing that the guards finally see you. Hey, one shouts, drawing a hatchet. What are you doing here? You run as fast as you can, but it isn't fast enough. Two of the sentries, weapons drawn, stand directly in your path. You don't have the time to fight. Instead, you do the unexpected and try to charge right through them. One of the bandits staggers back, caught off guard by your frankly insane aggression. The other is less shocked. He swings his hatchet at you as you pass by. Pain explodes in your side as the steel blade sinks into your torso. You stagger, but continue past the still shocked bandit sentinels. Sprinting toward Milius Blackclad's tent, you can hear the sound of footsteps behind you as the four bandits give chase. Uh oh, this don't look good. It's not exactly difficult to find the bandit wizard's pavilion. It's the biggest one in the whole camp. It only takes you a few moments to get there. Unfortunately, those few moments are enough for much of the rest of the camp to rouse themselves. Somewhere, an alarm bell rings, black cad fighters pour out of the tents, weapons barred. You need to move quickly, lest you be overwhelmed by the bandit wizard's underlings before you can finish the job. You rush into the small clearing before the bandit wizard's tent, weapon at the ready. The tent flap flies open, and out comes a figure in black, long staff in hands. He glows blue with arcane power, his pale and cadaverous form turned into a sinister billowing shadow by his voluptuous robes and cold eyes. What's this, an adventurer? The wizard laughs as his hands begin to blaze with blue fire. A mere boy at that. Is this bit of sport the best you could send me, Leofric? He roars and raises his staff. Then let's see how good you are. With that, Milius unleashes an immense gout of fire from the end of his staff directly at you. I get out of the way. I go right through. I break his concentration with a sling stone. Um, wow. And I'm going to try to break his concentration, I guess. I may not have time to get out of the way. You quickly slip a stone into your sling and bring it over your head in a single movement. You've no time to aim or carefully judge the power of your shot. You are too slow. The fire swallows you up an instant before you're ready to cast. The magical inferno burns away your clothing and sears your flesh. You scream in pain as the intense heat washes over you, and your sling combusts and disintegrates into ash in your hand. You feel yourself falling to the cold stone as the agony fades and your weapon falls from your nervousless hands. Your vision blurs as you land on your knees and you totter forward as the unyielding ground comes up to meet you. Some last remaining part of your mind screams at you to brace yourself, but it is too faint to matter much. Your mind falls silent as your head hits the ground. You never feel the impact. So I died. Because it offers the choices here of play again, play more games like this, share this game with friends, or email me when new games are available. So, in this situation, I did die. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go back. I will make another video where I go back where I made that mistake uh, just by misreading uh, the choice there, like I showed you, and I had a feeling this might happen. I'm going to try to get that greatsword by uh, making the choice based on what it actually reads by reading it correctly and we'll see if that makes any difference at the end so we'll make that alternative ending video and that'll be up on my channel here in the next uh next couple of days i want to go and thank you guys for watching be sure to leave your comments below what do you think about playing a game this long uh and getting through this part and then having it kind of in like that not real satisfying but hey it's part of the game um i like this i, I like the novel pretty good uh i think it's a little quick to get rid of you here if you're on the wrong track but i like the wording i like the writing it's pretty good 
Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Let me uh, know where you think I went wrong and if you think getting that greatsword is actually going to help. Uh, it's kind of weird. I mean, even if I have the greatsword, I feel like if I make the wrong choice somewhere in here, like, you know, slinging something at his head or ducking out of the way of his, of his wand or whatever, uh, I have a feeling if you don't make the right choice in there, you're probably still going to wind up dead. So uh, it's, it, that part almost feels like a little bit of luck to me. You know, maybe too much luck rather than it doesn't give me enough details to make a smart decision. It's almost like luck. And, you know, um, maybe, love's, maybe life's a lot like that too, though. You know, life is based on a lot of luck. You make choices and you face the consequence. Sometimes you might make the right choice, but uh, luck doesn't go your way. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure you rate this video. Be sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed to me up in the right-hand corner up there or the link below. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Zaxter99. In the final chapter of the Hero of Kendrickstone, I wound up the dead Hero of Kendrickstone. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.